Hello and welcome to Fit to Box channel. I'm Simon, former amateur boxer, current amateur boxing coach, and here on Fit to Box channel, I feature all things boxing equipment and also things to do with boxing. So this video is about a tournament that happened or half happened at the weekend, and that was the uh, Lonsdale Box Cup in Glasgow. So. The Lonsdale Box Cup was going to be the first box cup that Telford Amateur Boxing Club was going to compete in. We got three boxers that we were taking uh, up to Glasgow, probably about a six, six and a half hour trip up there for us, because obviously we're down sort of in the uh, Staffordshire sort of Midlands area. And uh, the pre prestigious tournament that has been already done before, I think they've done it five times before on a smaller scale. And this uh, was formerly named the MTK Lonsdale Cup, of course. Uh, we'd all already signed up to get our boxers in when we had the news that MTK was pulling out. Uh, there was a, another tournament at the time which was in Spain and they pulled that tournament. And we was thinking that this one in Glasgow might be pulled as well. So we waited and waited to find out whether or not uh, this tournament was going to carry on and we was very very pleased when we found out that it was indeed going to carry on. So um, what we did was we put our boxes in, we paid our fees, we obviously booked the hotels, we was all ready for this weekend and it, what it was was we were going to travel on the Thursday, so we travelled last Thursday, Friday was the quarterfinals, Saturday the semi-finals with the finals being on the Sunday uh, and we obviously uh, we thought that we got a good chance at winning some very nice belts that was on offer in the different weight categories. So there's a lot to unpack here because as you know already the, the Lonsdale Box Cup didn't actually reach completion it was cancelled halfway through much to the disappointment of boxers and coaches and and spectators uh, it really was a, a a disappointing episode so i want to just give you my experience as a coach there and uh, how i saw it and so you know i met the organizer uh, two weeks before, he actually refed one of my fighters at, at a show. Uh, he was a really friendly guy. I uh, got on well with him and so it was great to meet the organiser before uh, the event. So we were looking to see who were in our boxers division. So we went on to the computer system and having a look. And one of our boxers, who was a female boxer, she was the only one in her division and we was keen to find out whether or not she was the only one or whether there was other people that was going to be in her division. Obviously, because what we didn't want to do is to travel all that way for her not to have a fight. We had two other boxers in it, as I say, two other male boxers as well. But we really was looking at, while we was at home, we was looking at these lists, hoping to find out and, and to have reassurance that they all was going to get at least one fight, whether that be a straight final or two fights, as in they would have a semi-final and a final, or three fights where they would box on the Friday for the quarters, the Saturday for the semis and uh, the final, which would have been on the Sunday. So we were looking at this list. Uh, lots and lots of questions was going on from all different coaches and clubs because they were in the same position as us. Is it worth going if there's only one person in that division? So what happened was we had several reassurances that there were some returning champions from last year, uh, about 90 returning champions from last year that was going to be put into those lists and fill out the divisions. And now basically we were reassured that uh, everyone was going to get at least one fight. So we was, uh, prior to the tournament, expecting to see a, a full list. And we didn't get to see a full list. I, in fact, had a conversation with my female boxer's father in the morning where he was sort of saying, you know, is it worth us going if she hasn't got a fight? And I sort of said to him, look, we've got to go because we have been reassured that it will be sorted out in the list. So it was a bit of a leap of faith. So we travelled up. Uh, we had a, a great time in the car. And uh, as we always do when we travel at Telford ABC, so I was having a good laugh and whatnot. And then we obviously got there and we got there on the Thursday into Glasgow, got to sort of our, our accommodation. And then we walked across to the venue to check out 
the venue, see what it was like. And, uh, but also, I was expecting to see uh, a list of when our boxers were going to be boxing, whether they sort of were boxing on the Friday, the Saturday or the Sunday. So when we got there, there was no bouts list and we were told that they were still working on that list. And, and at that stage, I was sort of not alarmed because I knew that the weigh-ins were the day after and that perhaps it would all come out in the wash the day after. But it really was great to see the venue, um, see a, a few people that I knew as well uh, at the stadium. And then obviously we returned back to the hotel. Bearing in mind, all the boxers at this stage, they're still trying to make weight. They're still getting ready for that weigh-in that was the mor morning after. So Friday morning, it was about half past eight, nine o'clock. We went to the venue and it was a bit chaotic with the weigh-ins and the medicals. But to be fair, there was a hell of a lot of boxers there. And so I, I was quite happy that we got to the front of the queue. We got weighed in. That was fine. and We got medicaled and that was fine. We was ready to go. Now, there was a manager's meeting, which was for people like me, uh, the head coaches, head coaches only. There was a managed meeting that was going to be at 12 noon. Uh, the youngsters boxers, the juniors, uh, they actually started boxing in the morning and um, we were just waiting for this manager's meeting. It, uh, when it came to 12 o'clock, it was announced that we didn't need a manager's meeting. Again, we still didn't have this list of when our boxers were going to be uh, boxing. So we awaited the draw. The draw was meant to be around sort of 2, 2.30 on that Friday afternoon. Uh, and we waited and we waited. And actually we was upstairs and I get to, I got to meet the organiser's wife. And she was a lovely lady, spoke to her quite extensively. And there was very much a, a feeling of, you know, we just got to get the list sorted. Once we've got the list sorted, we can sort of carry on. There was still boxing for the youngsters going on. So it felt like the, the event had started and that it was just a matter of time before we got these lists but on the Friday as each hour went by there was coaches sort of saying you know this is the most unorganized box cup we've been to they didn't seem to be able to get this list together so we could organize us so at this stage we'll say if it was three or four o'clock on the Friday we still didn't know if any of our boxers were going to be boxing on that day so you can understand it was a, a bit poor on on behalf of the boxers who you know we was almost you've got to get them ready for the fight you've got to get them mentally ready you've got to get them warmed up you've got to get them in their shorts and uh, obviously their hand wraps and whatnot but as as the, as the day went on it was just feeling like the day was running away from them it looked like that they were on the computer system uh, the organizer was on the computer system there was also a guy i believe from sweden whose computer system it was and uh, they were trying to sort it out you could see them they were out front uh, in the arena and they were trying to sort out this list and it just looked like the people around them the officials around them were sort of almost starting to pull their hair out uh, although the organizer was sort of still in good spirits um, uh, people around him were showing signs that they were not happy with the situation and how it was going so um, later on it was about eight o'clock when they sort of suddenly stopped the boxing at eight o'clock on that Friday, the quarterfinals day, and they said, we've done the list or and it's on the computer system. So we all logged on and we had a look and it became apparent that that list was wrong. I mean, we had one lad who should have had seven people in his division. And then when we looked on the computer system, he was straight final on the Sunday. So it was kind of Where's the other people gone to? Uh, we didn't know whether or not they'd just disappeared, whether they'd not turned up, whether they'd failed the medical, whether they'd uh, not weighed in properly. But suddenly his division, where he was going to be fighting basically on the quarterfinals uh, Friday, the semifinals on the Saturday and the finals on a Friday, he was into a straight final. Also on that list, there was coaches saying, well, there's a guy on this list here and he got beat on the Friday and he's back in the competition. So it was apparent there was something badly wrong with that sort of first initial list. Uh, also, there was boxers that had, had won on the Friday and they weren't even on the list. So again, you could tell it wasn't going well, whether it was a computer system or, or whatever it was, something had happened where these mistakes had happened. And I know from my time in the bank that with these sort of things that if you don't put those mistakes correct at the start, they are just going to get worse as the time goes by. So on that 
particular um, uh, point, it was sort of the Friday night. We'd got this list. It was obvious the list was wrong, but it did look like that we'd got uh, someone in a straight final and someone who was going to be boxing on the f on the Saturday afternoon in a semi final. And we still hadn't heard anything about our female boxer. Nothing was mentioned about the female boxers. I don't even think they got to the female boxers even to this day. So they were definitely having computer system problems. Uh, I think they'd sort of done it all and then the computer lost it all or it messed up. And I can only imagine the, the thought that they had when that happened. It must have been horrendous. Losing the information and having to start again. I think probably where they went wrong is if they persisted to use the computer system which kept on failing them. They were losing time, all of this time, uh, during the process and I think they were running out of time. Of course the venue had got certain times that they'd got to end the boxing as well. So the longer this sort of delay went on the, the less time you'd got to get in the bouts. Also, there was five rings, uh, and not all of the five rings were being used. With the amount of boxers and the amount of fights that needed to go on, uh, it was becoming apparent that they was going to be struggling to to meet the fixtures, to, to meet the bouts. Um, so as we was going through, um, it was it was really chaotic. You know, there was a lot of coaches getting very frustrated. Uh, in fact, on the semi-final day, which was that Saturday morning, there was no weigh-ins because they weighed in the day before. Uh, they did do medicals, but as far as I could make out, there wasn't really marking who'd been medical. So it was a bit of a shambles that morning, but everyone was just waiting for that list. In fact, you know, one of the crowd went into where the organisers were and said, look, I'm speaking on behalf of everybody here. Who's the organiser? What is going on? And tempers were definitely fraying. The next thing I heard is that there had been a threat to the organiser and also a threat to the security staff as well. Because, you know, people were getting frustrated. People, let's remember, had travelled a long way. Uh, some had travelled from other countries. Canada, for example, there was a team from Canada and also Italy. I know there was somebody from Italy as well. But people had travelled from all over the country and spent a lot of money and was getting a little bit worried uh, as to whether or not this competition was even going to carry on. And then uh, it was a bit of a strange scene because there were, the fights were still going on. So we, we got a lad who was about six fights after the interval. Put his boots on, he put his shorts on. As soon as the interval was finished, I was going to put his hand wraps on. We was going to start to get him ready to get in. That would have been our first boxer in there. And then they came on to the uh, the announcer came in, stood in a ring, and basically announced that the, the actual tournament had all been cancelled. And at that point, obviously, everybody was really disappointed and really angry as well. Uh, at this point, there was no sign of the organiser. Um, and I think that was probably a good thing because people were genuinely angry. Uh, things were getting stolen. Uh, the belts were stolen. The medals were stolen. Um, it's fair to say that some, some people didn't really fill themselves with a lot of pride or acting in that way. Although I understand their frustration and their anger at the money that they had lost. Uh, so, you know, that was it. So we was told to go outside of the arena and then to uh, for the head coaches to go in back into the arena. We'd wait and go back into the arena to get the boxer cards because at that point I was really concerned that I wasn't going to see the boxer cards. So I managed to go outside, saw a lot of police outside, nothing really happening, a lot of obviously uh, disappointed people and then I went back inside and we was back into the main arena again and everyone was waiting for these cards and there's people saying that the cards some of the cards had been through in the air some saying that some of the the kids had took them in, in anger took the cards and, and everyone was a bit worried about whether or not they'd get their cards back because as you know your boxer cards it's got the the actual all the dates and all the record of your boxers in there it's got their uh, their medical in there it's got their photo in there and a, a bit of a ball ache to replace to be fair so I was concerned at that point that I was was not going to be able to get those boxer cards three boxer cards and I know that there was lots of others with a lot more boxer cards that was in that room as luck would have it uh, after they'd announced about the Italian boxer they did call out Telford ABC 
come forward to get your cards and I went forward, it was all being supervised by the police, went forward to the uh, lady official and got the cards uh, and was very happy. I even went to the toilet on the way out uh, and then wandered out into sort of the car park and we went home again massively disappointed. Now since that has happened there has been uh, an announcement that's come out from the organisers to say that there was a, um, a firearm that was reportedly unconfirmed report of a firearm at the stadium. Now, uh, I've got no doubt that there was threats uh, uh, to the organiser and to the security staff. I heard that from the organiser's wife. I've got no doubt about that. So obviously that will have happened. But in terms of a firearm and unconfirmed reports of firearm, which the police actually didn't find. But I have to say on that point... We was never told about sort of we are evacuating for the safety of the crowd. It was just the fact that the the uh, the tournament had just couldn't carry on. Uh, and also, I would have thought if there was any uh, risk or if there was any worry about a firearm, that when we was on the way out, that all them police would have searched us, which they didn't do. Also, I certainly wouldn't have thought that they would have let all the head coaches back into the arena if they was worried about a firearm uh, and that again is what happened also as i said after i picked up the box of cards i was freely able to walk around the arena i wasn't challenged by anyone again if there was that sort of threat that was going on surely i wouldn't have been able to have done that so you know i can't say whether or not that happened or not the only thing that i can say is the organization was chaotic the whole way through from the moment that we we got there all the way through we was getting sort of little lists that were sort of changing uh, we'd never ever got the full seniors list and the female lists that just wasn't mentioned at all i don't think they even got there so it was a massively disappointing event for everyone concerned uh, i'm sure the organizers didn't want that to happen you know it was a massive event if i'm honest i think what probably happened is that they uh, had too many boxes they bit off more than they could chew the computer system let them down to the point that they were running out of time mistakes were made in the in say the quarterfinal day and those mistakes then became bigger as they realised the next day and the next day for the semis and the final what a result of those errors on day one were going to lead to in day two and the final day, day three, the Sunday. So, you know, the real sort of losers in this are the clubs amateur boxing clubs that would have lost thousands of pounds, not only in entrance fees, um, but they would have lost a lot of money in accommodation, missing work, kids missing school, um, travel, obviously petrol, diesel getting back and forth. These countries, these people that come from other countries, they actually, you know, they had flights. Some people buy us from a local club, they had flights up. Um, there will be clubs that will have lost thousands and thousands of pounds. I think even though we sort of, we took three, it still cost us. Uh, we probably ended up costing us a, a thousand pounds um, plus 500 but we bought a couple of head guards we bought some tracksuits all things that we can use in future events but probably a thousand pounds all in with entrance fees and accommodation i think we was probably one of the luckier clubs at that amount of loss i know that somebody said that the canadian team had lost ten thousand uh, dollars which no amateur club can afford to swallow. I know that there was other clubs that were saying that they'd lost 5,000, 6,000, 2,500, 3,000. Obviously, because some of these teams did take big squads, you know, 15 people, 20 people, and we only took three. So it was our first box cup. Unfortunately, it went the way that it did. The, the sort of the organisers are coming out and they're talking about refunds. We wait to see whether or not anything comes of that. Personally, I'm not holding my breath, um, given the organisation that was on the day. Really, uh, well, obviously, we won't be going to a Lonsdale Box Cup again, uh, because after that, it's just too much of a risk for that to have happened again. Uh, we put a lot of trust in the organisers and uh, and it didn't it didn't happen and i'm not saying that the officials that was there 
didn't try to make it happen. You could clearly see that they were trying uh, very, very hard to get this list together. I just think that it was just not happening, whether that was the computer system. Uh, I actually said to one of the lady officials when you got the organizer and you got the guy from Sweden whose computer system it was and they were still trying to go through it and I actually said to one of the lady officials I said what this needs is a woman to take hold of this and I mean that in a in a very good way I used to work in a bank certain tasks women are very very good at and much better than men at and I think, uh, you know, if my wife was there, I tell you now, she'd have grabbed hold of that perhaps at the halfway through the quarterfinal day or towards the end of the quarterfinal day. And I guarantee that if my wife had been there, she could have grabbed hold of the lists and made sense of what was happening, putting it all in a logical order. And that would have sorted it. She'd have done it by hand if she had to, or she'd have used Excel, whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I think there was a real opportunity whereby the organisers could have salvaged the event and it didn't happen. And uh, I would liken it to when you get blokes who are driving and they don't, they're actually lost and instead of asking somebody how to correct and where to get to, they just carry on driving because they think they're going to sort it out. And, and I would liken it to that. The unfortunate thing is that that did affect many, many thousands of people in terms of spectators uh, boxers and coaches as well so that error of not being able to get the full lists out really did um, cause problems that eventually ended to the cancellation of the event there was lots of apologies from sort of the announcers uh, but ultimately it was an absolute shambolic disaster so only time will tell as to sort of uh, whether or not the firearms uh, thing was a factor or whether that was just on top of the uh, disorganisation. I mean, if it had been really well organised, we had a list and all the bouts was on time and all five rings being used and, and everything going, and then there was a, a, a firearm sort of uh, emergency, and then they called it because of that, that's a different thing to what I witnessed, which was continued chaos, continued disorganisation, and basically it looked like the wheels were coming off before anything was mentioned uh, in the aftermath about a firearm. And certainly the police were not acting as if that was the situation because they would have surely been trying to find the firearm. Uh, well, I didn't see anybody looking around and I certainly didn't get searched. None of us got searched on the way out and I didn't get searched on the way in or when I was wandering around the arena after I got the boxer cards or when I left. So a very, very disappointing Costly in terms of time, costly in terms of uh, money, and uh, a very uh, sort of bad taste in the mouth from this box cup. But I just wanted to come on here. Uh, I, I was I was at the event. I did have me my lanyard there, and I was massively looking forward to the event. I was massively looking forward to seeing my boxers and how they did. Um, I was really disappointed they wasn't able to show all of their hard work in, in the rings that was there. So that's my take on it, how it was, how it felt on the ground. Um, I know there's a lot of chatter online about people, things that they think would have happened, and it ranges from people thinking that it was, was a scam um, and sort of uh, all, all the way to just the, the disorganised bit. You know, so it was a real range of, of what people thought happened. I, I think it was just badly organised and they just wasn't able to recover. And now they're sort of just trying to rescue some semblance of reputation. But as I say, I think a reputation for this particular box cup has, uh, has gone forever. Unfortunately, I understand that they've done some successful events in the past. I think the last one they did last year was about 450 boxers. This one was a much bigger stadium, which much more boxers. And I think that may have been the real factor that they just bit off more than they can chew. So we're looking now just to put the put the event behind us. And uh, hopefully, I mean, we, we will be attending more box cups because I think it is a, it's a great format for amateur boxing. Um, but I will definitely be wanting to see more organisation prior to setting off to anywhere and anyone running a box cup i think you gotta you gotta be so much better 
at making sure that the people that are coming to the events know who they're going to be boxing. Uh, I mean, even if we knew that there was, say, quarterfinals and who was in it, that would have been great. And then they could easily have had the weigh-in and the medical and they could have said, well, he's not in it and he's not in it. He's not turned up. He didn't weigh weight. Uh, he, he failed the medical. And then you could clearly see who would have had a boy, who was going through, and it would have been a much easier process to eliminate the people that didn't make the grade if you'd have had that list a week or two prior to the event, which a lot of coaches were asking for. So I hope you enjoyed that little insight, as I say. I've, got to, I've tried to remain as, as impartial as possible and just say my experience of the event um, as opposed to sort of what's being said out there on the internet. I hope that you enjoyed that. Please like and subscribe to Fit2Box channel and I shall speak to you soon.